This is a review of the history of surfing by Matt Warshaw. He worked for Surfer Magazine for six years and has a BA in history. This book took about four years to write. It's very legit and I am a surfer to confirm this. I love the painted different angles he had in this book. There's facts. You gotta remember fakes or fake history. It's a well-researched book and it's well worth reading, especially if you're into extreme sports or you are a surfer or want to go surfing. Surfing in general is cool, wild, and free. It's simplicity. However, before 1930, the boards weighed about 50 pounds. So that's heavy compared to three or four pounds now. Some surfers don't want competition. I spent six months in Costa Rica. I don't care about competition. I did see one at night, which was very interesting to see. One of the best times of my life were during those six months. And here's some words and culture that influenced the world. Dude, calm and aggressive, share the stoke, cowabunga, awesome, gnarly, whoa, radical. And there was a ton of innovation, sometimes brought on by competition and design. And surfing's like a meditation dance. Even if you're landlocked, you can do it. You can find a way. And it's important to understand the soul surfer. There's dynamics of waves. There's vibrations. It's not just wind. There's offshore wind that helps it. But there's swell, periods, and nature. Nature's force and power. I'm going to jam through this basic history. Um, I'm reading off a list, so it'll be very straightforward and somewhat boring. At least you can see some of the data. So what is surfing, actually? So in Peru, they had a raft. It's called a caballito, which you just ride down a wave to make things easier. Is that surfing? No. And there's a bunch of theories, but we don't really know. So it was pretty much born in Polynesian islands. Hawaii's pass. Kids playing on these small boards. It was a royal sport as well. And they had a fun and recreation activity to it. Not just being scared of the ocean, of the mysteries, the sharks, and the dangers, the octopuses. Death. And missionaries, when they came to Hawaii, they dampen it. That's not all they brought. And eventually, this spread to the rest of the U.S. Through writing interests, Jack London and Captain Cook, who died there. And it's spread by this Hawaiian surfer named Duke, who went to Australia and other places. So eventually, they made hollow boards, Tom Blake fins in 1935. There were lighter, stronger, fiberglass, resin boards, Bob Simmons around the early 50s. Southern Cal culture was really big with surfing, which I am partially from. There's localism, there's non-conformity of surfing, and understand the wave technology and the nature, the periods, the durations, the sets. It's a building of energy and scientific measurements. And the culture had at certain times a, a Beats and a Jack Kerouac style, a hippie surfer, a rebel, or a, a nomad. There's a salt hair slacker. Australian had their own type of culture. Of course, they had the waves. They had a a surf rescue type culture. The late 50s, he started using polyurethane foam. There's wetsuits near me, near Santa Cruz. Jack O'Neill uh, developed these wetsuits for cold water. Even though you sink in it, it helped and prolonged your surfing sessions. Surfer magazine started to get big. Surfing boom in 1950s and 60s, as well as skateboarding. And how do you judge a competition? People flock to see it. Who is it? The person that rides the best, most tricks? It's time to compete. But it's like a waste of time watching corrupt politicians at work almost. You're just watching, not in the game. Hollywood 60s gave it an image, a fake image. Endless Summer came out in 1963. It was raw and made about $1 million. I have not seen that movie. There was a shortboard revolution in 1967. Aussies really pushed this and innovated this. They had brands such as Rip Curl, Quicksilver, and even cross sold with those ugly Ugg boots. Bro, dude, and mate are part of their culture now laid back and embrace that surf culture in the Oz territory. A lazy surfer. And it could be a bad surfer, all the competitions, try hard. 70s commercialize it as one big lie, cheesy movies, Beach Boys lifestyle, good music. However, they tried to convey it into a sellable fashion, a fake one. There's a hippie minimalist fashion. They have a board called The Fish. 1970s, Pat O'Neill, Jack's son, invented the leash, a good leash, which is very controversial, which I, but is very important. Boogie board and body surfers. Tubing, which is riding in the wave, become very accessible with the shortboard. Timing, the pipeline in Hawaii. Bali was undiscovered. And then corporate sponsors started to come in 1979. There was travel, racial tensions during this time. And surfing has no colors on most. It just, it's very simple. That's what's great about it. It's almost like kicking a soccer ball around. It's a global sport. Some of the boards were like 6'6 six, six in size, double fins, and they moved the fin six inches forward to give it better direction. Twin fins for small, single for big. Longboard came back around the 1980s, that more chill vibe. 1981 had the trifin thruster. 
Elmark boards around the late 80s. I have an Elmark board. I think it cost around $500 for me. Surfline the company and reliable wave data. You could call versus a website, which you could see. You could save money instead of praying for waves. Are there waves or they're not? There's always this issue. People that live next to the beach says people lie to keep people away versus inlanders like me. It can keep you down, slave to real estate or to debt. There was a very good racial story I don't want to mention in this book, but check it out. Kelly Slater really brought the sport up with his talent winning an East Coast surfer, a Florida person. He was on Baywatch, involved in Hollywood, a musician. And I didn't hear about Jack Johnson, which is another good musician. Ariel's starting to grow. Mavericks near me, the big toe in surfing. And later paddleboards, which my brother does in the early 2000s. Surf cam to see the waves. And elites wanted to control the flow of surfers, have no inlanders coming in. A few movies, Step into Liquid, Endless Summer 2, which I have seen, which is surprising. I haven't seen the first. The Making of Foam, it had toxic materials in it, such as TDI. They call this Blank Monday. There weren't enough shapers because of this toxic, somewhat like Black Monday. There was a crash. Surf Tech and even Costco began selling Chinese boards. There was a super bank in Queensland where they put sandbags on the reef. That's very interesting. I'll do more research on that. And there's manipulating of the environment for the waves, for the pleasure, which is very controversial. Kelly Slater has wave pools. Now for the culture of surfing, there's real surfers out there. And it could be pricing and masculinity. The bigger the waves, the more status. Has always been a part of that culture. Too scared to go out there or get hurt and drown. The East Coast had a buddy system and no surfing, more regulations and fear. The beach is such a big part of California and Hawaii that there's no stopping it. There's going to be none. Competitions could be tryhards. Some surfers, like me, love the dawn patrol and the tides. Away from the crowds, more freedom and in the zone. I don't mind surfing in the dark. Some are scared and don't want to be alone or as well as want to be seen. There's that fear of the shark factor. There's dopamine, surf and sex, sometimes mixed with potheads and that feel good vibes can be done to escape and it's nature just like a fisherman now concerning females there's always share the stuff it's perfectly fine for female surfers they do wear that bikini it can remind me of guys thirsting on twitter sometimes they'll just they're just there to try to talk to chicks or they could white knight on a twitch channel it's the same thing same concept and for female surf competitions they hardly got any attention does it deserve equality when in terms of data, you see men purchase most of the wetsuits and equipment. And some females just go out there in the bikinis for attention. The reality is we already know the nature, especially if you're an independent surfer, not a cheerleader. And for surfer magazines, there were no interviews with the females. Feminists complained. And use your attention and time unless she's gained. There's the cost of female sports. Public schools fund this. And in terms of female surfing, they don't really get many tubes. It has to deal with the lack of leg strength. And it can be the lineup to catch these waves. It's very crowded. Scars in general, female beauty and scars do not mix very well. A scar can damage your prospects. Some surfers be cucking, mostly pro surfers, recognize the soul surfers and don't cuck. My opinions on surfing. It's free, it's nature, it's ebb and flow. It's refreshing, it's flow state, almost like rock climbing. All you need is just a board and surf. I would never diss someone because I know what it's like to travel far to go surfing. The Inlander. I spent six months in Costa Rica. At first, it was three months that I decided to extend it because I was having so much fun. Bali's just as badass. Freedom. I have five boards. I'm more of a big wave surfer, not gigantic. You understand you are not in control. The wave takedown, you can die. Relax, hold your breath, and cover your head. Outdoorsmen can clash with the meathead manosphere, just what it is. You can be called a bum, living lazily, always at pleasure and recreation. From this book, I want to pursue other things. There's big lessons. The videos used to cost a ton to produce, carry, and video production for this. Now all you need is an HD camera, Adobe Premiere, and work, and YouTube. It's a reminder that you could do this broke resourcefulness, as well as not buying up all the surf sites, saying this ocean is mine. It's free and cheap equipment, just like how football is the world sport. All you need is a ball. Become a free rider, not tribal and elite. For other resources to check out, you can check out Endless Summer, Gidget the Movie, which I have not seen, Step into the Liquid, I have that video. Duke Kahanamoku, Jack Johnson, and another book called Barbarian Days, A Surfing Life by William Finnegan. And this, in this, I want to start with a German I met on that Costa Rica trip. Obviously, Germany is not known for their surfing. He had an American flag on his board, a hoopty board just like me, yellowed and cracked, dented and yellowed. 
and I surfed with them in Pavones, and I didn't really hang out with them as much. Pavona is one of the longest waves. Then I saw him at another site, Boca Barranca. This is a during like a three or four month period. Then I saw him at Witch's Rock, of all the things. And I have much respect for the Inland Warrior, because I am one. I had to walk the walk to go. He wasn't exactly the best surfer, but who cares? He was a soul surfer. And I always try to help out these Inland people, just like Rolf Potts for backpackers. <laughs> 